What's up, VC? How you living there? <clears throat> it's me. It's Eric Weinbender. You signed on. You clicked. You already know who it is, right? Uh, I'm not hiding behind any names. It's Eric Weinbender of the VC, Eclectic Eric here. I'm about to get this nonsense in. I'm going to warn you, this is like martini number two or three. So, shit might go south. But it's all right, because I'm doing it for Mazzy. If you don't know, Mazzy loves you. Uh, I love you. Mazzy loves a martini, thus the martini. Without ranting too much about martinis, because who gives a shit outside of uh, myself, uh, Mazzy, and maybe a handful of people. Uh, a good martini, uh, to me, is a gin martini. And uh, I always go by ratios and not measurements, because it's not about the volume. In, uh, volume. You can make a smaller drink uh, to the size of your preference by ratios. So... The gin ratio would be about four or five parts to one part vermouth. Uh, nautical gin is a traditional botanical gin we're drinking. And then it's just a Dolan dry vermouth. And a couple of less splashes, uh, quick splashes of Angostura orange bitters. And then I don't know if you can see it here. I'm going to be uh, crass and reaching into my drink. I am a orange or a lemon guy on my garnish. Not so much olives. I mean, I'm a fat fuck, so... If I wanted food in my drinks, I just I just get some food. You know, I don't need to eat and drink at the same time. Just personal preference. Uh, that doesn't make me uh, right or wrong. It's just my opinion. And we all have opinions. So let's get into this nonsense. In the background, uh, sitting perched atop this mystery item to some under 30-somethings, is a cassette. That cassette is Sam and Dave Golden Hits. That's what's been in the background. It's in the room... Around the bend, I don't know how well you can hear it because it's playing out of a boom box. Yes, another year for people my age and older. From a year, a generation gone is what I'm saying here, people. Let's get after this. So I've seen a lot of whacking off going in, uh, uh, going in and out of the a lot of, a lot of whacking, right? Uh, Mazzy loves to whack, and uh, you know I think he's he, he whacks the vinyl all the time. Uh, he's done, uh, I think, box set vinyl whacking. I think whacked to 45s. He's done some CD whacking. Um, I haven't seen anyone do any cassette whacking. And so, you know, I was just throwing on a shirt. You know, uh, nobody needs me shirtless in a video. Done it. Don't need it. So I threw on uh, this here shirt. You're not going to be able to read, but it says, uh, it's a, a nerd reference for Guardians of the Galaxy. It says, level 10 Peltic Sorcerer. Uh, my lady saw that and uh, thought of me. Uh, thanks, babe. I'll take the compliment. So, anyways, this here is a Walkman, youngsters. And uh, a Walkman, pre-Discman, played cassettes. So I was like, man, I I got something building up in me, and I got to get it out. So uh, I'm, I'm whacking off to cassettes. It is what it is. So I'm going to pull five. Uh, some of you guys might have thought this was like a dartboard. This is not. This is a cassette caddy. Uh, most of my cassettes are uh, long gone. To history, either from a, um, uh, my dad and I had a custom truck, uh, back in the day that was, uh, broken into, and, uh, I had some, I think it was 88 cassettes stolen, and then, um, a year or so later, uh, hot summer heat, I live in the Carolinas, predominantly grew up in North Carolina, I've been living in South Carolina for some 15 years or whatever, a ultra hot summer day melted another 50, so... These are the remnants. And these are all cassettes I bought when I was younger with uh, the money of a kid that was picking up pine cones and uh, raking uh, uh, pine needles in yards and what have you. So a lot of comps and music of the time. Uh, uh, right on. Let's get after it. Uh, I don't want to wander. If anyone knows about Mazzy, he's very concise. He's very on point. He never drifts. He's, I dare say, formulaic. So uh, let me get to these five and only five cassettes because I don't want to ruffle the feathers of one of the, uh, I, I don't want to say conservative, but one of the most conservative gentlemen in the vinyl community. So let's get after it, right? So I guess the point is to not look. So let me just open this bastard up. And these are all out of order. Um, so I don't have to really worry about the alphabet in any way whatsoever. So let's go top, middle, left, right. Center, down one, is that, oh shit, is that dead middle? That should be good enough, right? So, 
uh, I thought I saw something fall out of the corner of my eye. Oh, it's the label. Right on. Oh, sweet. I get to dig that out from behind my record collection. That's going to be a fucking awesome adventure, right? So, <clears throat> nothing to it but to do it. Let me get you at a slightly more familiar, slightly more comfortable camera angle. Here we are in my uh, once upon a time office that's been swallowed by records. Let's get after it. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason. I'm supposed to talk about whatever the fuck I want, and I guess I'll do that, and I'll drop F-bombs, because uh, I love Mazzy, and Mazzy loves F-bombs. He loves martinis. You get the point. You see layers. I'm whew, deep here. Let's get after it. Uh, the first one is uh, Jay and the Americans Greatest Hits. Um, you might have seen this because at uh, the end of my first uh, vinyl community contest, uh, Veronica made her first, her, not her first, you can only make one debut. I've had a couple martinis. She can't make a first debut. She made her debut and having to be Cinco de Mayo. So we hit a Cinco de Mayo extravaganza. And uh, in that, uh, we just pulled anything that pertained to Mexican culture. And this song has my favorite song about Mexican prostitutes. Come a little bit closer, you're my kind of man, so big and so strong. Bow, bow, bow. Anyways, uh, if anyone has a top five uh, songs about Mexican prostitutes or prostitutes in general, please let me know who doesn't love a good song about a good old prostitute. Uh, yeah, that's ridiculous and nonsense. You know what? Uh, I'm going to insert a political rant because, you know, my lady's Mexican and <clears throat> Mazzy loves a political rant. And my thought on uh, building a wall, oh no, we need to build a wall, is that if you're going to build a wall between, like, America and Mexico, not like, it would not be like, if we're building a wall between Mexico and America, then we're probably going to want to, like, dig a trench or a moat between Canada and America. We're probably going to want some kind of, like, force field dome over Hawaii. We're going to want a laser perimeter around Alaska and then, well, then our, our coastline's unprotected, so we're probably going to want a marauding horde of pirates and shark-infested waters along our coastlines. Because we need to be safe, and the only enemies are the Mexicans. So, uh, right on, political rant, because uh, uh, Massey's pro that. The next thing would be Bush. Uh, this is Razor Blade Suitcase. This is a follow-up to 16 Candles, if I'm not mistaken. Probably circa 95, 96. 96 is correct, and this is on the... Well, you're not going to be able to see it. I highly doubt it. But this is on the Trauma Interscope label. So <clears throat> this is all sorts of beat to death. And Bush is one of those weird things that they caught... They got caught between the era of uh, grunge. So it was kind of post-grunge. And then radio was still prevalent at that time. It wasn't about iPods and uh, streaming music. So people really listened to uh, radio as a tangible thing at that time. So the late 90s, with the whole wave of, like, post-grunge, um, you kind of have, like, almost like a dark emo, like, uh, alternative. Like, you know, bands are kind of like, mm, Debbie Downers, like, Everclear, you know, winding up and crying about their dads. And to everything, like, like, a slew of one-hit wonders to stuff that was kind of still grunge-esque, like maybe Seven, Seven Mary Three. And then you, you had all the uh, indie alternative groups, and kind of college campus pop from everything. Macy's Pair, uh, Playground and Trippin' Daisy. A whole bunch of stuff I like. But this band kind of gets uh, sandwiched between the alternative era and the grunge era. And it's kind of forgotten. And I remember at that time, Gavin Rosdale, um, who did not work out with Gwen Stefani. Because uh, no judgment, but I believe he's bisexual. And their relationship didn't work out for a multitude of re reasons and uh, etc. But I remember when I, when I was thinking when, when he was married to Gwen Stefani, I was like... Is there a luckier guy in the world? Because I was like, you know, as a freaking teenager, and all I could think about was uh, throwing a D in the V of Gwen Stefani. <clears throat> uh, rhymes unintentional. I should be a rapper. Speaking of something that's rap-esque, beautiful segue, CNC Music Factory. Uh, I own this because I needed to choose some music for living room dance-offs. You heard me, right? Uh, your boy is deceptively nimble, quite agile, and as a youngster, my sister and her friends would have dance competitions that I was forced to participate in. And CNC Music Factory seemed, at that time, via me, uh, uh, to be a good decision. So, <clears throat> if you don't know CNC Music Factory, sweat, sweat, na 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 na. Anyways, doesn't really matter. I think a uh, CNC Music Factory, besides the fact I think of wearing like a sateen brown hammer pants, 
matching vest, silk shirt, flat top fade with a rat tail and lightning bolt zigzags inside of my head because your boy was fresh. Uh, besides that kind of nonsense, because I was that age at that time where we had to do dumb stuff like that. Uh, I was thinking about, uh, tell me if I'm mistaken, was it the Weather Girls? They had a one-hit wonder in the disco era of um, It's Rain and Men. They were the background vocalists for this, and they were quite perturbed and angered by the fact that they were not represented in the music videos, and they had more attractive, younger, more felt ladies singing in the videos, and they felt slighted, and they sued the band. I can't recall the outcome of that case, but I do know that they sued for not being represented as background singers. Uh, the next thing, I'm going to bypass something because some, something here is very Mazzy appropriate. This Rush Permanent Waves, uh, this is sadly appropriate because if you guys haven't noticed in a lot of people's vinyl tag, uh, one of the vinyl tags, uh, is one of the questions was your favorite drummer. A lot of people's favorite drummer is and was, depending on how you look at it, Neil Peart of Rush. Um, he was had amazing time and it was very talented, massive drum kit. Uh, he passed away recently and unfortunately I wish I could think of something less morbid and then I'm trying to and I see a Mercury label and my dad was a Ford Mocha, uh, Fomoco uh, gearhead and he liked Mercury's so and I'm thinking about my dead dad so dead people in the VC uh, cheers to that let's move along I guess something on something more positive and fun I'm really glad by happenstance I pulled this um, Mazzy I had some other cassettes that are, are now long gone. This is the only remaining Beatles cassette I have. But this is my first ever uh, Beatles album. This is a comp uh, via Capitol Records. It's the Beatles Rock and Roll Music Volume 2. Uh, well, I mean, I was, I was about to read uh, some of their biggest hits, but it's the freaking Beatles. And so this compilation, everything on here is absolutely massive from... Back in the USSR, Helter Skelter, Taxman, Got to Get You Into My Life, Hey Bulldog, I guess would be a deeper cut on this, Birthday, Get Back, Dizzy, Miss Lizzie, Anytime at All, Drive My Car, uh, probably my favorite song at that time in, in my youth. Uh, Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby, The Night Before, I'm Down, and Revolution. Forgive me just spitting that out at a uh, rapid fire rate, but this is my introduction as a youth into the Beatles. So yeah, cassette edition, I just whacked off all over the place. And I feel good about it. I feel, whew, what a relief, man. I tell you what, got a couple of these martinis in me. They're kind of dangerous and delicious. Whereas if you find it, that nautical gin's uh, super tasty. I've, I've told you before though, uh, Hendrix, the summer solstice is nice, but the, uh, the other one, which is in a different room right now, I can't relate. One of their limited editions is even better. Whatever has been in multiple previous videos. I'm just rambling now because I guess I have the right to do so because Mazzy does that. And I feel like I feel in a couple Mazzy things because, you know, Mazzy likes to break his own rules. So I feel like I should have seen one of these things and then flipped and grabbed for something because I'd be like, that capital label reminds me of this and, oh, the trauma label, blah, blah, blah. And I don't have that depth of knowledge. I just... I don't have it. Mazzy is so damn classy. And I'm being a rambling dick, because, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, Mazzy, I do enjoy you. Uh, I love you, Death Man. I mean, some people say that, and it almost sounds like trite or nonchalant or just, you know, whatever, or obligatory response. I do love you. I love your positivity. I love that you're not uh, opposed to speaking your mind if it comes off as harsh it's just your opinion and i respect that you have opinion and you voice it um and if people don't like it you don't have to tune in uh of course i'm envious of your music collection who doesn't know that i'm just stroking you off right now uh unintentionally by throwing you compliments but i think you're super dope i appreciate your vclt that you sent me and i also have something to you that uh i really haven't been procrastinating i'm just waiting for uh, life to ease up uh, around the restaurant industry and you and some others have VCLT that I just need a box and ship. So uh, cheers, rock on, I love y'all. Um, have a fucking awesome day.